them. Which them? Yeah, this asking what are the options Nigerians have in this current excruciating uh, economic uh, hardship? Well, one of the options we have is we, we can camp ourselves in the in the redeem in the redeem camp, or we go to the mountain and pray. I mean, these are options, by the way, and these are options that Nigerians. Is this coming from you, or you're trying to be? Uh, I'm not trying to be cynical or trying to be controversial here. These are options Nigeria like to weigh in. They rely on on prayer, right? If you tell Nigerians to protest, they're not going to come out. They are not going to come out. Nigerians will tell you that God will bring us out of this economic depression that we find ourselves in. So I think the only option Nigerians have is to find a very tall mountain or a very well renowned known church camp or Muslim camp. Let them go there. I mean, after it, let us. That's it. There's fasting and prayer. I, I, I disagree with you. That these are not. No, you uh, cannot disagree with me. These are solutions that have been tested and trusted. No, 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 no. You can't. No, say, no, 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 you, and trusted, no. You man. cannot tell me it is. It is no. No. These are solutions that if you ask this guy, he will tell you we just have to pray. Nigerians will not protest. You tell the Lord they say no. But tomorrow you find them in their thousands in the churches and mosques. So the only solution they have is let us go to that mosque or church, we pay our tithe from whatever we have left in our pocket, we pay to the pastors, and then we pray and fast. You say tested and trusted. Nigeria currently is not improving. So oh, you think, it's a, you think it's not improving? You gotta be kidding me. You don't believe in the powers of prophecy? You know, prophecy doesn't come into the past overnight. It takes a period of time. So we are in that process. It's incubating. I mean, the pastors, well, you know, pastor told us Nigeria will get better. Is that not so? And people believe it. People believe it. If I call a man now, a well-known man, should I call him? <laughs> should I call him? He will tell you he doesn't disbelieve the Mr. Matthew, he's calling you. He will tell you he does not disbelieve. He will tell you he believes. Mr. Matthew, am I, am I, am I, am I, am I wrong? To say that the first and the last option Nigerians will embrace is prayer over protest. Um, I think it's relative. It depends on the individual. Okay, for you, the Bible encourages us to pray with that season. That's it. No, like, get it I right. think I've got right. my answer. No, get it right. The issue is we, as a people, as human beings, God has given us potential, has given us ability, so we ought to do. Solve the problem. Do you physically? believe that the prayer can do the work of what the protest will do? It depends on prayer without work is dead. That is the truth. You are not, you are not answering my question. You are just trying to be diplomatic. No, look at look at it, look at the problem. When it comes to collective, yeah. it's difficult to have a solution to prayer because everybody may not be right. But, but we have no, our get it right, but get we it have right. our Bad pastors. No, it's not even about. Do you do you disagree with a pastor who said, "Let us pray, and Jah will get better"? And this is a no, man. No, in every protest. nation, anyone that do the will of God will eat the good of the land. It's individualized. I'm getting my answer. No, it's individualized. For, I mean, you guys. I hope you guys are getting the gist. You guys are. You can see. I call a man who is well educated, who understands the difference. There's not a thin line. It is a thick line, a wide gap between praying and protesting. In every democracy, the people have one sole civic duty, which is to protest against what they don't like by the current administration. But what we have is some people calling themselves men of God will tell the people, let us pray, let us go into fasting and prayer, and things will get better. Just recently, the current administration subsidize pilgrimage mm, 24 billion. with over 24 billion right 24 billion will set up if i'm not mistaken to set up 12 massive well secured with cctvs farm estate with each farm estate no less than 2000 hectares in the six geopolitical zones it will employ people for one good year to be able to import semi-mechanized machines 
But what happened? They are subsidizing pilgrimage, and people are happy. People will rather go to this religious, you know, sites rather than fight for the prosperity of their homes. So I mean, the only option they have is to stay back. We we'll find a mosque or a church. Let's go and pray. I, I'm not going to waste my time. So that means you agree with what uh, Pastor Adebayo said. Because I know you for someone who disagree. No, no, no. You see, the question is in democracy. I am a minority voice. But you know, the majority will have that say. For me, I have said the, the, the Pastor Adebayo is a, is a rascal. I've said it. He's a rascal. He's a rascal. In the sense that this man does not want people to be emancipated, he doesn't want people to understand the duty of every citizen in a democracy. The same Sultan of Sokoto, I can't recall his name, is also telling people to pray and fast. Right? Yesterday, one governor said, Let us go for prayer. Zulum. Zulum, a well, you know. Respected God, he said, Let us fast and pray. The question is not about praying and fasting today. Nigeria, when it comes to the most religious based country, Nigeria comes first. In Africa, we are the most religious state. In South Africa, the only export Nigerian house in South Africa is redeemed MFM Christ Embassy. If you go to South Africa today, you will find redeemed Christian Church of God branches in almost every city you'll find winners chapel you'll find a uh, christ embassy you'll find the muslim ones there but you will not see one really one one one, one, one is just yeah, it's what a religion but it is religion and that's why i told you that the first and last option they have those people i don't believe i believe in protest right i believe in you exercising your civic duty but when i try to convince people and they don't listen what do I, I can't kill them I allow them to go and pray and fast and after they go and they fail probably they will come back to agreement with me but for now i cannot fast. so the only option people have is to go into praying and fasting perhaps maybe a messiah will fall from heaven and probably change the situation of things what about nlc strike what's your take on nlc strike nlc one too many are now a jokers for me i think these nlc guys are not sincere in the execution of whatever they are fighting for I, I, I keep saying one thing when the nlc go into an agreement with the federal government is the nlc a part of the implementation committee if they are not a part of the implementation committee are they a part of the monitoring of implementation committee if they are not part of those two then those guys have lost their purpose right they have lost their purpose because you go to a round table to negotiate right and then you sign a memorandum of understanding if you are not the one implementing but you should be the one monitoring you should be the one giving the people weekly reports that okay fine the government promised us 100 cng buses we went there this week nothing has been done guys you can see nothing has been done by the federal government these things are supposed to be coming on a weekly basis right this is how a serious pressure group will act. They will take up responsibilities. They shouldn't be waiting. Now, this federal government is quiet. For the past three or four months that they've had an agreement, Labor Union have never given us one single report on what implementation has been done. And it is totally wrong. Right? It's totally wrong. I am not against them, not protesting. But what I know is so many people have lost trust in the Labor Union because of the leader, Joe Ajero, who seems to be a political, you know, uh, conscious person. Every pressure group, they call it civil society organization, must not be evidently political, I mean, be, 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 be sentimental in, in his politic, uh, political lining. Joe Ajero is sentimental. So most times, ordinarily, people are supposed to support him. We'd be like, after all, you didn't support our candidates, so why should we come out? And support okay let's talk about the crisis lastly in the labor party uh Abure, 
has been accused of laundering 3.4 billion naira. Abure and Putaobi are and conjoined Putaobi. twins. They are, they are conjoined twins. You cannot separate them. When Ayu had an issue in PDP, right? Wasn't separated from Atiku. Right? Atiku and Ayu were conjoined together. Ayu was was alligated, right? He was said to be corrupt. He was said to be high and dead. And that had an effect on Atiku. Now, the same thing applies in Labour Party. Abure has been committing fraud. Obi cannot come out and say he was never aware of it. It is totally impossible. And you know what breaks my heart? Do you know the broker of peace? It was a pastor, a reverend. It was a reverend Abure was using to brainwash people to forgive him. This religion, eh? This is how powerful religion has been used to manipulate, to, me, to subvert our will, and these evil people keep having their way. Today, Abure has been exposed for collecting bribes, for selling slots. I mean, we, I think we need to go and recheck. For forging signatures. I think we need to be uh, let's go and check, double check Peter Obi's slot. Because we know Peter Obi was never a member of the Labour Party just, I think, barely a week before the next, before the national primaries. So we need to confirm how did Obi achieve the ticket of the presidential candidate? You know, Abure is, he seems to be a, an epitome of corruption and there is no separation between him and Obi. They are all in it. The Labour Party is a corrupt party. Obi is, like o, o, Obi is an enabler of a of corrupt corruption. person because Obi does not have the capacity or the courage to come out and say it categorically that, oh, this man, I am not in this with you. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm going to leave this party or you resign and the likes, right? So, for that reason, Obi was being sentimental to Abure. That means he enabled him, right? And for that, I don't think Obi can be trusted. setting up your farm? Nigeria should go into agriculture. When am I setting up my farm? Your farm? My own farm. I yes. have a farm. I have a farm in Igbo, sir. Okay, yes, yes. Okay. You are a patriotic Nigerian. So we are advising the to I have, a farm, I have a plantain farm in, in, in Igbo, sir. Yeah. So, I mean, so I, I'm into farming already. So, but basically, everybody must embrace farming. I mean, that's the way I force. Thank you very much. God bless you.